Welcome to the Pelican Island Audubon's first field trip of the year to Sebastian Inlet State Park that has more visitors than any other state park in Florida because of it has a variety of habitats. Great waves for surfers, ocean and brackish water for anglers, trails for hikers, cove and beach for bathers, camping area as well as ocean, sand, inlet, and palmettos for birders. I am Juanita Baker, your field trip guide, and I'd like to introduce you to Bob Barber, who with your permission will videotape our experience here. Today I will review basics of birdings, ways to approach identifying birds. It's kind of nice to have a reminder, and there's different kinds of birders. Some of these birders are photographers, you can see. Other people like to count birds. We can be citizen scientists by posting the birds seen here today on eBird. eBird is run by the University of Cornell Ornithological Laboratory in collaboration with National Audubon to track the birds in different places and migration times, essential to know what is happening to our world environment. Bird watching is one of the most, com it is the most common sport. There are more bird watchers than any other one single sport. So we can make an impact on, as a science, to everybody count the birds and we can enter them on eBird. But if you see a bird, even beginning birders, the more eyes we have, the more likely you're to see things and say, what's that? That's terrific. Birding is a wonderful sport. Other people come to enjoy the outdoors and get exercise. Some people come just to make friends with people that are, might be like-minded. And I'm the kind of birder that I love the beauty of the birds. This is why I love the scope. And anytime you want to see a bird in a scope, I'll be happy to put it on because it really brings up the feather patterns and the bills and you see the eyes really up close. It's so exciting, I think, to use our modern technology. One of the things that we want to make sure is not to scare the birds. And we as birders have a code of ethics. And the code of ethics is that we don't want to disturb or flush birds, and particularly in the breeding season. Identifying birds is like putting a puzzle together. You notice the similarities and differences in the detail. One of the first things about birding is to identify a bird, you look at first, I look at the shape and the size. Okay, those are the two big characteristics to put them in the right categories. So the biggest birds here are what? Storks. The storks, the big storks. So you start with the big birds and say, what are they? <laughs> and you put them in a family then. With the shape of the bird, you put them in a family. They are shaped the way they are in order to catch the food better. And the storks fish. Now these storks are just sitting around here. They're not fishing. What they would do to fish would be having their bills in the water and then they would clamp shut when the fish go between the bills. Can you believe it? So they have to hold still. And most of the other birds are just resting here too. Look at the legs and the bills, Bill. The legs and the bills will tell you. Okay, what color are these? Uh, Bill is black and I didn't see the legs. Okay and it has that little brown tuft and he's small right and and if, if you look in the scope here bill you can see uh -huh. that there's yellow right at the base of the bill okay yeah under his eye oh. like a mask for his eyes yes his black legs and a black feet and a yellow right and one thing about the snowy is it has yellow feet the great egret has a yellow bill, all yellow bill, okay. which is the big distinguishing feature. But it's bigger than the snowy, yeah. but it has all black legs and black feet too. One of the difficult things about these seagulls is that there are immatures out there. They're the ones that are all brown. There are also ones that are a little bit more white on them. Those would be the first year. And the ones that look pristine and like a laughing gull often does in the non-breeding season is the whitest ones here. Pick out a whitest one right over there in the middle of the group is a, a whitest one. 
Now that would be an adult, and all the little brown ones are all related, but they all have black bills and black feet. So one of the ones with the solid gray back, the white bellies, and the white heads are adult that probably bred this year for the laughing doll. <laughs> That's another way to, to look at birds is to hear the sound and often 80% of your identification is, is the call. First things to do is to look the difference between a turn, a sandpipe like the willet, and a gull and it's all on the shape of the beak. Uh, you really want to key in on that beak shape. The gulls have curved beak in order to get, pick at the fish, I think, and capture it, whereas the terns have long pointed beaks. The Caspian tern, if you look, it's, it's kind of grayish, muddled all the way back, and it has a bright red bill. It's very thick and very different from this royal tern, which is in this group, and it has a lighter orangey bill. Many of these will winter here, and some go on further south. This is the beginning of the migration. Knowing the season when a bird is here helps identify it. Oh, a great blue heron. Huge bird. Hey, that osprey is right close. See that osprey right there? Behind the stork. The scope, he's gorgeous. Nice soft landing, too. He did. Oh, he's, oh, he is gorgeous. They're just gorgeous in the scope. I just love them. Oh, there's the reddish egret back again. So another way to identify birds is by their unique behavior. The reddish egret is an amazing bird. It dances, and so it's the active feeder. And you see it's spreading its wings and it creates a shadow from the sun. Those wings draw the fish because they think it's a log and they'll be safe under the log. And that reddish egret has figured out that eons ago it figured that out, I'm sure. A final way to identify birds is knowing the habitat, what birds you might expect to see. Birds go where the food is. Birds were drawn to this cove because of the plentiful mullet. This habitat is different. It has palm trees, sea grapes. A red-bellied woodpecker? He stuck his head out in the back. Why don't we take a walk through here and to the beach side and to the jetty and just see what we see. No, they're not feeding. They're, they're resting. These sanderlings, they run from the water. They don't like to get their toes wet. I think they're so much fun. I had a great time with all of you, and I thank you for all coming to our first birding trip of the year. So I hope you all have gained some knowledge of the birds that are here and the area and the habitats that are here too. It was Very a tremendous good presentation and so great access, so many different birds and great photo opportunities. So whether they're interested in birding or photography or both or what. You ought to got it's it. just, some good pictures. Oh, absolutely. Right. And people learn so much. When you guys go out, you know, you tell people so much about so many different birds. Uh, you can't get that any other way. It's tremendous. It's just Pelican Island Audubon Society is holding field trips all year. And we will post them on the website soon, the, the list, so you'll know where, where they are and when. And of course, they'll be in the newsletter. And we have the third uh, Monday evening is our general meeting. So be sure to come because we have good speakers. Thank you, Bob Barber, for your generous donation to Pelican Island Audubon for producing this video. And thank you to all of you for participating and getting excited about the birds. and to the photographers for sharing their photographs. Happy birding!